Okay, some of you had questions on 1026, which is one of the homework problems. I'm going to look at that right now. It says, we know that a unit vector is a vector of magnitude 1 unit. Um, I'm going to copy the vector diagram. So we have one of the Pythagorean triples. Five by twelve by thirteen. So we know this is five, and this is twelve, and this is thirteen. And then it says, um, then draw and label the components for this vector. So this vector has components of five, comma twelve. That's a component for it. And then um, it says to express an i plus j form. So there's the ij form. And um, if you want to find the unit vector for this, you just divide by the magnitude. So it'll be over 13. And the reason we do this is because this is equal to 13 over 13, which is just the number 1. And now, think of the number 1. This is on the unit circle. OK, so that is 26. Um, 37. A little bit more to 37. Um, let's see. You're flying in a single engine plane from New Orleans to Houston. From New Orleans, you head due west. So let's, um, we're going to go west. Um, and let's kind of write out our vectors like this, northeast, southwest. Alright, so north, east, south, and west. And we know that north is zero degrees. Alright, so we know that um, New Orleans, you had due west towards Houston. So we're going to have a vector going this way, due west. Um, 315 miles away, but shortly after takeoff, your plans and navigational equipment goes out. You press on, and as you reach the cruising altitude of 14,000 feet, you encounter a headwind blowing towards the southeast at 64. So our cruising speed is 210, so that's our magnitude. Um, miles per hour. And then there's a plane, a headwind, going southeast, shorter magnitude, and I'm not drawing this to scale, at 64 miles per hour. And this is your wind. So you can see it's coming at the plane. And this is the plane. It says, <coughs> the wind will affect the plane's speed and direction. What are the true speed and heading of the plane? So um, if we figure this out, this is actually 36. But we'll do 36 first and then look at 37. Um, we need to figure out these angles. So southeast, according to the unit circle, is actually going to be negative. I'll write this in red. Negative 45 degrees. Because we're moving 45 degrees away from east, 45 degrees from south. Um, the plane going west will be 180 degrees in terms of your unit circle. So now we have our components. We can figure out our components. Think of the plane. It will be... A equals 210 cosine of 180 and B equals 210 sine of 180. And we can do these calculations in our calculator. So we get negative 210 and 0, which should make sense. Um, because we're just going west, and then for the wind, 64 miles an hour at a, band, or a standard angle of negative 45. And we get here, what, 45.3, and B is negative 45.3. So our components here, 45.3, negative 45.3.
Now, once we have our component forms for both, we are going to add these together. Negative 210 plus 45.3. We get our resultant. is negative 164.7 and negative 45.3. We draw this triangle. It's going to look something like this. Negative 164.7 and negative 45.3. And we need to figure out angle, we need to figure out our magnitude. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out our magnitude. And we get 170.8 miles per hour. That's our true speed and then our bearing. Take the tan inverse, tangent of negative 45.3 over negative 164.7. Take tan inverse of both sides. And then we get 15.3 degrees. So this angle here is 15.FC4 degrees. But um, if we're thinking about this, uh, the bearing on this, it's going to be, we're going to go around 270 minus 15.4, which gives us 254.6 degrees is our bearing. So. I know I said that was 37. That's actually 36. 37 asks us, use your work on the previous problem to answer the following questions. So, we erase up here to leave all this on the same page. So let's say this is 36. Now we're going to move up to 37. Um, if the plane flies for 1.5 hours, where will the plane be relative to Houston? Okay. So looking at it, um, B and C, I'm not really going to go over. I mean, we could look at it, um, but it's not going to be super important for your project or your test. So really, A, if you just look at A, if this is where Houston is, and your course is on this bearing, because of the wind, the plane flies for 1.5 hours, going at a speed of 170.8 miles an hour. Um, we can figure that it's 315 miles away. So let's say this is 315 miles. He's going 170.8 miles per hour, and he's going for 1.5 hours. So you can multiply that, 8 times 1.5, and we get 256.2 miles, which means he's going to be probably somewhere down here. So the answer for this would be he is southeast of Houston. And you can see that because here's Houston. You can see it's about southeast of it, more or less.